Hello and welcome to the Bloggers Magazine on i24 News, where we bring you a different perspective on social stories and trends from the Middle East. On today's show, we'll delve into the ethical, environmental and health-related arguments of veganism. We'll also uh, explore animal rights activism from the moderate to the extreme. Joining me in the studio today for the great vegan debate is Omri Paz, the founder of Vegan Friendly. Hello, Omri. Hello. And uh, Danny Swibel, a local meat eater and carnivore extraordinaire. Hi, Danny. Great, great to be here. Um, so uh, before we get going, can you tell us a little bit about Vegan Friendly? Omri? Yeah, sure. It's a nonprofit organization that uh, started a year and a half ago. Uh, we have the Vegan Friendly certificate on uh, about 300 restaurants around Israel, mm -hmm. showing that restaurant has lots of uh, vegan uh, dishes. We do lots of big campaigns as well. Just now we launched the uh, Rotem Sela campaign. Um, the, an Israeli model. An Israeli model that hit, I think, a half a million views in about four days. Mm -hmm. uh, we mark also uh, products in the supermarkets, so it would be more convenient to be vegan in the daily life. And lots of big events as well. Nice. All right. Thanks for that. We'll, we'll hear more about what you do uh, later on the show. Let's get going. A growing number of vegans worldwide have pledged their lifelong commitment to animal liberation. But one Israel-based animal rights group are out to shock. 269 Life have uh, found a new way to draw attention to the plight of animals raised and slaughtered for human consumption. Before we go to our portrait of the day by Tracy Levy, I do want to warn you that it contains shocking and graphic footage. Try to keep your eyes open. Brandings, decapitated cow heads, human blood, the international animal rights groups 269 uses extreme methods to get their message across. Watching the chickens wander around his backyard in Tel Aviv, you would not necessarily guess that this is the home of Sasha Bourjour, the founder of 269. In his backyard, he's built a small animal shelter for chickens that he has saved. Each day, like uh, 15,000 chicks in Israel uh, go through this process, like where they like, shred them alive or uh, 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 throw them alive in a garbage bin uh, to die slowly from exposure or just uh, pressure and stuff. So she's the lucky one. 269 gained worldwide attention in October 2012 when Sasha and two other vegan activists branded their bodies in Tel Aviv's Rabin Square. The controversial and provocative video went viral and was viewed by hundreds of thousands within weeks. It's not pleasant to get branded with a number from a boiling hot iron, but at the same time, I was pleased that it all went well. It was a relief. We wanted to present the life story of this one calf, number 269, to show his life story, to show everyone that he's a living thing. It's easier for people to identify with one individual rather than with a mass. That's just human nature. 269 is the ultimate anti-institutional organization. It has no CEO, no formal recognition. It is a global activist movement that inspires itself. If someone wants to act, if they feel inspired by our activity, they should simply act on it. They don't need permission from me or from anyone else. We met Sasha just before 269's fifth international event in late March, which took place in the Suzanne Delal Center in Tel Aviv. Hey, Oli, your victim has arrived. Basically, we're intending to create an art installation that will involve cutting the veins of the participants to create a connection between the blood of the animal they're eating and the blood that runs in the veins of every living being, including ourselves. I see red gloves. Maybe they are butchers. Maybe they sell meat. So I said we should stay here. There's going to be a surprise. I don't see the division between animals and humans. Humans are also kind of animal. Biologically, it's just a fact. From my point of view, when I see what humans are doing, murdering, raping, killing each other, I don't have much love for our species. We're a very destructive species, very violent. 
מודלים. All right, Omri, let's, let's begin with you. This is obviously kind of an extreme example of, of the activism that, that takes place. Do you know any other extreme examples or maybe also some moderate ones? Yeah, well, first of all, it's important to understand that the reason why they do uh, the extreme uh, exhibitions is uh, for um, people to... All the people in, the, in their daily life are extremely... Um, they they don't realize what's going on in the in the factories mm -hmm. and that's the way of them to kind of you know uh, stir up people and to show what's going on and there isn't anything that's uh, less extreme in what's going on in the factories and what they're showing so that's their way to show exactly what's going on to 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 stop people from their daily life from their jobs from their uh, f uh, um, social life right. and to for them to understand what's going on right the question is is it working and i guess we'll we'll turn to danny for that see this is the question i mean traditional slaughterhouses are obviously a disgusting thing the way chickens are raised the way we get our eggs a lot of these systems are very disgusting and i un understand that people should see certain things but is it changing minds i don't think so because i don't think people get changed by a lot of fear mongering which is kind of what these groups are doing they're scaring us into believing a certain way and nobody wants to be convinced in that kind of manner in my mind well, what do you think? Well, I think uh, two things. First of all, just the fact that we're talking about it, that's also one thing. It raises the, the awareness. But the second thing, uh, it's empiric. You need to ask 100 people that watch this uh, kind of uh, technique and ask them, what do you feel after watching it? If most of them will say, it uh, makes me go further than veganism, then that's, that's the result. Don't yeah, you well, it is, it is hard to argue with the numbers. You know, in, in Israel especially, ve veganism is, is becoming very popular. About uh, some estimates say that a million out of Israel's 8 million population has already uh, uh, turned, maybe not totally vegan, but at least they don't eat meat. You think that's a result of these these methods that we've seen? Uh, I think it's a combination of uh, lots of different uh, activism that's been in, in Israel. Uh, the lecture of Gary Robsky, for example, mm -hmm. uh, protests, lots, lots of activism being being done from lots of different organizations. Right. And I think the mixture, the collage of all those, all, all those uh, activism makes what's going on in Israel, which is a vegan revolution. Right. In the last two years, the number of vegans doubled itself, maybe even tripled itself. I don't think anything like that happened in the, in the world. So why do you think, why, why Israel? It's not like we, we, you know, we've solved all of our other problems and we can focus on this. I think one of the things that makes Israel uh, so, uh, so, so vegan is that it's a small country, everything is extremely viral. Um, if I want to do an event, I know that I can bring 300, 400, 500 people to the event easily just by opening an event on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, everything goes, spreads really, really fast. Like, right. you, like you signed the Otem Sela, uh, a clip that we did, 500,000 views in, in four days. That is impressive. I also feel it has to do with also the fact that the price of meat here in this country is a bit expensive, <laughs> and I think people, obviously, with a natural desire to want to be healthy, but also save money, that's a factor. So I sometimes wonder if some of these campaigns, if they're as effective as possible, because I know some people who became vegans just because they wanted a bit of a healthier lifestyle, not because they really were aware of maybe how the animals were treated. I don't think that was a major consideration. So I understand you're saying it's a combination, but I'm, I just wonder. I'm curious to jump in. Just last question. Is it about the way they're treated, or is it about eating meat? It's about to try to uh, inflict the least suffering that we can on animals. Anyway, we, we build houses, we, we, we pave roads uh, to try to minimize the suffering. And lots of people will say that they will never wear uh, fur coats, for example, right, because it's right. unnecessary and it causes lots of cruelty and suffering. All the right, same well, thing we'll get back to that later. We'll uh, keep going for now. In today's post, we take a look at uh, other vegan campaigns with a focus on the Middle East. Sometimes the vegan ideology can cross over to other ideological campaigns like ones promoting peace in the region. Let's take a look. Be veg. It's cool. Animal rights activists have often gone to great lengths to get their message across. A few years ago, Jordanian PETA activist Amir Tarek marched in Amman dressed in lettuce. Others have used more morbid methods like holding dead chickens, covering themselves in fake blood, and filming disturbing images. This one of little baby chicks. The more pleasant approaches remind us that loving animals promotes peace and love on Earth. By now, we're all familiar with Peter's campaigns. 
But this one may be new to you, connecting animal rights to resolving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict by painting this image on both sides of the infamous wall. Give peace a chance. Go vegetarian. Perhaps, in the spirit of pacification, both sides can drop their guns and their love of lamb and stick to eating falafel. But it's hard to imagine the day when Middle Easterners forego their beef makrube or lamb shawarma for a plate of tabula. While it may not happen tomorrow, the one thing everyone can agree on is that hummus is healthy. We eat it, they eat it. It's vegetarian, it's healthy, Strong. it's beans. So we're making progress. All right, so we're doing our part with, with falafel and hummus. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it, it gets to, uh, especially when we bring in the question of medical uses and, you know, testing on animals. Because there was a case last year of uh, an Italian woman named Caterina Simonsen who um, had a, she's a, she was sick, and apparently she posted on Facebook that animal testing saved her life. And as a result, she got death threats online. What do you think about that? Probably? Well, first of all, we need to uh, keep in mind that uh, there's lots of uh, testing that's that's like for uh, cosmetic testing. Right. It's unnecessary. Okay. Right. Now we're well, talking we're about something ex extremely specific. Yeah. The ideology that, that that stands behind the vegans that uh, that they uh, posted on the on, on her uh, situation was that there isn't any difference between uh, uh, between humans and and animals. We're all the same uh, creatures. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't uh, kill one creature to save another. That's what stands behind it. But I can say that now, in, in these days, in, in the 21st century, you have artificial uh, human tissue that you can use that to get to the same, same results. So you don't even need to torture and test animals to, to get to those results. But the thing is, that, you know, that's not fully entirely true. There's a lot of things that we still need, unfortunately, because our science is still developing. Animal testing t tends to be the number one way for us to find cures to certain diseases. So there's evidence on the other side that's saying that science is still not there. And unfortunately, believe me, I am against having leather clothes and, and down pillows, but sometimes animal testing has its place in the world we currently live in. Okay, yeah, well, there's, there's evidence on one side, evidence on the other side. But, but we always go back to the same, the same situation that we need to ask ourselves, is one species more important than the other one? That we that we can that we can take it and torture it and use it for our benefit. But right. is it an open when it discussion? comes to, to meat? Now we've seen in in the Netherlands we've seen the the hamburger that was raised in a in a lab. You know the. Uh, Making meat in a in a petri dish. How do you feel about that? Is that, um, is that um, okay? I'm I'm uh, for it. I mean, if that would makes if that will make people stop uh, eating animals, real animals, and uh, they can eat the the the, the, the artificial uh, um, the artificial uh, meat. Yeah, yeah, meat. No, but you know, I'm I'm curious also. Uh, uh, taste wise. Well, taste wise, <laughs> of course. But it's is it delicious. healthy to to be vegan? Well, don't we need meat? I mean, we've been that, eating it that, that's since really, the, that's the really beginning good, of time. That's a really good question. In uh, 2007, the ADA, the American Diet Association, uh, had a big, big report saying that uh, people can can have a really healthy and complete life just just on a, a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, physically, there isn't anything that we can't get from a, a from a vegan diet that we need to take it from the animals right more than that you have so why do you eat meat there are, there are a lot of studies that suggest obviously especially in america and the states where i'm from there's a lot of people eating way too much meat in their diet i understand but the thing is there still is a place for meat you know a moderate amount of meat in your diet that has health benefits and certain things you cannot get in plants despite what some reports have said other reports have said you can't get certain things like b12 your amino your fatty acids that we predominantly get in fish so I wonder the, the studies that are saying all these things because there are also studies that say vegans have less strong bones and they're more likely to get certain fractures in their bones. So there's other evidence saying that a certain amount of meat is necessary sometimes in a human diet. Right. Well, the discussion is still ongoing. Uh, I, I guess we won't uh, know. Neither of you is going to convince the other one uh, at this point. On the health issue, no, I can bring a hundred studies that show exactly the opposite. And right, I might believe right. in some of them as well. Right. Well, let's uh, keep going. Uh, every week we ask our bloggers to recommend something uh, we should all check out. Here are our bloggers' choice. All right, let's begin with you, Omri. What what you bring us? Uh, there's the blog, uh, The Vegan Woman, which is a content uh, site uh, okay. established by uh, Sivan Pado, a vegan-American uh, veganist. Uh, a vegan-American? 
Israeli vegan. Uh, the blog has lots of uh, recipes uh, and uh, lots of articles. She talks about everything from uh, having a vegan family. Nice. Uh, if, if you're vegan All and your right. spouse isn't vegan, and it's we'll really crazy. Check that out. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Danny. The Odyssey Expedition. It's got this British guy who's going all around the world. He wants to go to 193 countries, experience all different things of culture and style and ideas, and he's trying to do it all without traveling on an airplane. I see. And eat meat in uh, each I, of these countries? I'm sure he's going to try a lot right, of different no, things there well, in his travels. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Omri. Yeah. Thank you, Danny, for, for joining uh, me here today for this super interesting uh, uh, conversation. I'd like to thank you at home as well for joining us. You can find out more on our website, i24news.tv. And of course, you're welcome to join us again next week. Bye-bye.